I don't really need you to get me elected. I need you once I'm elected. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Well, you know what's crazy? Uh, I can attest to this right now. And anybody wants to argue this fact, I'm ready. Because I just voted twice. I just voted twice. So if I just voted twice, how many times do you think anybody else can vote? Who's, you know, sitting here all day. Or whatever. I mean, I can't say who and what and where, but I just voted twice. So, let me let John Nungerson know he got, he got my vote twice. But that's the problem here. There's a problem with the city elections here. The city election board calling out Al Schmidt. Al Schmidt, city commissioner's office. I just voted twice. Fraud alert. Voter fraud going on in Philadelphia. First of all, I wasn't even registered there. And I voted twice. Voter fraud in Philadelphia shared his shit out of this. Voter fraud. And I don't care who side you're on, Republican or Democrat. This is a lot more important than what candidate you're voting for. Because I don't think any election is fair in this city. Especially since I just voted twice and wasn't even registered. in front of the um, polling center where they're counting the votes, where people are just dumping piles and piles of tablets on the top of the, uh, the table. And a handful of people are looking through them. There's supposed to be five people there. There's not five people. Sometimes there's only three people. So when people are taking pictures of this, they're taking big like, cardboard pieces of paper and holding them up so you can't see what's going on inside. It's complete chaos. But most importantly, they don't tell us how many GOP people are in there. They're only going by the, the, uh, the register that people sign in. Yeah. Like, nobody was told to sign out when you leave. So, it's so they won't nonsense. let any it's GOP people in because the GOP people keep, were not told to sign out. Exactly. That's the scam. This is not a fair election. Whoa. This is a joke. This is a joke. This is, this is bullying. This is intimidation. This is steal the election. I'm sorry. I hope you so, so I just grabbed one box. It's 500 names of people that are not on a register. They're not on the supplement list. What are you in there? She was in there this morning. No, I've been in there all day. I just left. 
And so why won't they let anybody in to view their what's capacity? They said there's capacity. In the morning, you could just walk right in. So I trained of, and walked right in. Because of COVID, in. they're saying capacity? We all have masks on. No, we we'll put our mask on. I think it's they don't, the poll workers they don't, don't like us see. there. And they, they're very rude. But you you're know. allowed legally to go. It doesn't say there's yeah, capacity. That's why we have the Supreme Court order. Yeah, and well, not to let us in the building? And they're dragging luggage, they're dragging bags, they're dragging um, igloos, like ice chests. Um, they're there doing five to six hour shifts. And yeah, I mean, they, they were taking those items in with them into the clear glass window room just to the back. And that's the area I couldn't cross into. If all this wasn't enough, in Antrim County, ballots were counted for Democrats that were meant for Republicans, causing a 6,000 vote swing against our candidates. The county clerk came forward and said, tabulating software glitched and caused a miscalculation of the votes. Since then, we have now discovered that 47 counties use this same software in the same capacity. Antrim County had to hand count all of the ballots, and these counties that use this software need to closely examine their results for similar discrepancies. The people of Michigan deserve a transparent and open process. At this time, I'm asking Mr. Daniel Sims to allow these 19 people in so that they can assist with the counting, just as the Democrats are in counting. Now, Mr. Sims has said that there are COVID rules that he cannot break, and therefore he's not allowing these people in. If that is the case, let's take 10 or 12 or 15 Democrats out and let 10 or 12 or 15 or 19 Republicans in. These these fine people have been on a rooftop in the sun. Uh, they are well behaved, well groomed, uh, all uh, cooperative and patient. And they merely want their opportunity to help count and watch the counting. And everyone in this country now knows that overnight, 200,000 votes were suddenly appeared in the city of Detroit. That's a lot of counting. And those, if there's 19 Democrats down there that are counting, it's only fair that 19, now the number looks to be about 25, should be permitted to go down and count just like the Democrats. So I'm asking you, Mr. Daniel Sims, please allow these Michigan residents to come in at this time. It's now 3.26 p.m. and then many of them have been up here two hours. I called them. And I asked them to come up. And they, and they took days out of their working schedule. They, they, they took a half day, a day, to assist with the democracy of this country. That's right. That's right. And now they're being told they got to wait on a rooftop because, they're, because they're, there are COVID rules and it doesn't make sense. The building is acres and acres. They all have face masks. And if there's 15 or 20 Democrats, then 15 or 20 Republicans should be let in, alternately at least. They all have masks on. None of them appears to be sick, and nor have you asked them if they're sick. You could simply ask each one, do you have any COVID symptoms? No. 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 Do any of you have, have you, any of you been with anyone in COVID, that has COVID in the past 24 hours? No. no. Excuse me, we are doing the same thing and we're all downstairs. Why are you having more downstairs? Well, you've been here longer than us. That's right, we have been. We have, this group has been. They wouldn't let us in. They won't let us in. They put cardboard over the windows. Why do we call it? They put cardboard over the windows? Well, the picture. All right. So, Mr. Mr. Daniel Sims, three more people have just come in and said they are not being allowed. I would like to propose that they take a head count how many Democrats are counting versus how many Republicans, and let's even that up. If there's 300 Democrats, there should be 300 Republicans counting. 
Then send some of your Democrats They're out. They're not even down there. The, uh, the attorney that was They're not even already down there. They're not even. Democrats. They still are not letting even independent people down there. Okay. And then another 135 from no clue how many people not get in there. neither party, which consists of We've the watched ACL people leave, and they do not let anyone back in. They should come out. They should come out. They should come out, and it should be Democrats versus Republicans counting. It should be an even tally, don't you agree? Of course, yeah. of course. All right, I'm going to end this video now because I want to bring it down to the authorities. And I'm asking you one more time, Mr. Danielson, please let these counters come in. Will you let them in? Can't. You can't. Why not? COVID capacity. What COVID capacity? What is capacity? That's not true. Can you radio in okay, and ask your boss? Any more information. You, who told you not to disclose any information? I need more information. Can you at least radio and ask again if anything is changed? I can't just pull any more information. I'll be giving my stresses. Have you been, were you well, told not to let this. this particular group in? There's three people that can go in because us three are coming out, so three people can go in. How about that? He hasn't been doing that. No. Whoever no. comes no, out, he doesn't, doesn't let people, people in. Walk out and let they're not in. keeping track of who's coming and going. Just like them in counting ballots, they're not keeping track. They have no clue how many people are in there. They have no clue. There's more Democrats in there, I'm going to tell you right now, than Republicans. That's what we were told. <laughs> Mr. Sims, you've mentioned COVID rules. Can you just tell us what COVID rules you're referring to? No comment. I'm asking well, you a third time. Will you let these people in? They've been sitting up. a third, fourth, or fifth time. Still, it'll be all the same answer. No comment. Again, there's 25 people up here on the roof of a building. Would you let them in? No comment. The Democrats I'm are not letting video. us Republicans in, folks. Yeah, this is they're also not letting any independents in. Yeah. And they are not letting us in. They're not letting us in, folks. They say that black lives matter, but black votes don't matter. Because Trump is winning in Detroit. Yes, he is. And you guys are thwarting his efforts in Detroit. You're right. You're right, brother. You're right. Hi, my name is Yeah. All Trump. You gotta do what you gotta do. Fuck Trump. I've got around 80. work at the uh, mail or polling place, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, fuck Trump. This isn't happening just here. We have exactly the same lawsuit in Wisconsin, where exactly the same thing happened. Except in Wisconsin, mysteriously, at 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning, about 120,000 ballots appear. <laughs> oh, here come these ballots. Well, we have no idea if they really are ballots. We have no idea if they're signed, if they're postmarked properly. 
if it isn't just the same person who submitted 100,000 ballots and they all got counted. This is the way they intend to win. Now I'm informed by former Congressman Sweeney, who's been going around the country and collecting this information, that similar situation in Arizona, similar situation in Nevada, and a similar situation in, in Michigan, in Detroit, Michigan. I don't really need you to get me elected. I need you once I'm elected. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. lot of you guys were talking about population density. This is killing me because if that's the case, by that logic, how did President Trump win Florida? Because a lot of rural Florida showed up and voted for Trump in places like Orlando, Tallahassee, Jacksonville, West Palm Beach, you know, the densely populated areas. They didn't vote for Trump, at least as far as the, the overall win. And this just goes to show that most of you actually don't know what you're talking about. And this is this is how they get away with it letting them literally manipulate the results. You're not going to sit here and tell me that the vast majority of your state is just tumbleweed and fucking old sheriffs hanging around in the wild, wild west, and only in your democratic cities is where things are happening. That's such bullshit, and you fucking know it, okay? There are densely populated cities outside of the most popular democratic cities, you know? Like, for example, places like Naples, Florida didn't vote Democrat, but guess what? It's still a fucking city. And, and, and this is the kind of stuff Gainesville, Florida. There's still a whole college out there and a whole group of people out there. My point being is that you need to stop sleeping on things like TikTok. I've said it time and time again. This is where all the proof that this election is rigged is coming out. Places like YouTube will ban, block, shadow ban people, deplatform people for just simply showing the truth. And the reality is stuff like this exists. Let me show you what we're dealing with here. Okay. Look at that. They're showing you. Look at that. Look at that. This was yesterday, dude. And they're showing you, bro. They called Virginia for Joe Biden when there was 1.3 million votes in favor for Donald Trump, 52%, and Biden was at 45% at 1.1 million. That's rigged. That's not even a fair, that's not an election. That's not how those numbers work. You, you, you can use that densely populated trash all you want, but that doesn't hold up. And if you really had any shadow of a doubt that this was a rigged election, let's let Biden tell you that they are committing voter fraud. And notice the Biden and Harris signs in the background. Secondly, we're in a situation where we have put together, and you guys did, did it for our administration, the President Obama's administration before this, we have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Do, do you really, do you need to hear any more than that? How, how can this be? Look at that. 1% in, they already called it Biden in Virginia. That's Bro, tell me that doesn't look sus. Less than 1% of the votes are in, they called it for Biden. Now look at look at Trump, fifty eight percent to forty one percent. But Biden Biden wins with just l less than one percent of the voting. That's already voter fraud right there. They they already stole that state clean from underneath Trump. When America went to sleep last night, President Trump had a pretty good lead in Michigan. That went away around four a.m. this morning when police escorted in a big box of uncounted ballots, 138,000 of them to be exact. And out of the 138,000 votes that they found, 138,000 of them was for Joe Biden. So me Bruh, come on, you know what I'm saying? Like 130, you found 138,000 votes, 100% for Biden. That literally never happened in any election ever, which is why you can look at every election in the history of our country and you would never see a spike up like that. They're trying to get Trump out of office and they're gonna steal it. Look at this. Well, something's messed up in Virginia. That's for damn sure. How? How? What? And this is the news coverage, bro. Check it. 
Hold up. It's too early, but we can report that Biden is leading in Virginia. <laughs> Biden is leading in Virginia. Too early to call, but Biden's leading. I don't know about you, but 69% is a whole hell of a lot better than 30%. Know what I'm saying? Okay, we all knew it was going to happen, but Virginia was plainly obvious. California being called 11 minutes after they closed. Hawaii being called before any ballots were counted. Arizona, the Sharpies, the ballots counted. Come on. You tell me how our polls closed at 8 p.m. here in California, and six minutes later, California goes Biden. Bullshit. I call bullshit. The state turned red. You can't count those many fucking ballots, excuse my language, in six minutes. Bro, people are pissed, and rightfully so. I mean, like, if I voted and I stand in line, I stood in line all that damn time, and they're cheating like this, I'd be pretty pissed. But this is this is exactly why I don't vote. They're going to do what they want to do either way. It's all pre-planned bullshit, as you clearly are seeing. Oh, so Trump was getting ready to blow Joe Biden out. They could count the mail-in ballots for 45 other states, but not the last five, Michigan, Georgia, North Carolina, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. They, they, could, they can't find the ballots for the last five states. Oh. Nope, apparently not. You see what I'm saying? Like the last fight, they were doing so good. The, the election was fair while everybody was awake. Everybody goes to sleep. This happens. This is proof that mail-in ballots are 100% a scam. Right here. D if you didn't know what that was, that was the spike. We run this that back. This is proof that mail-in ballots are 100% a scam. You have Michigan. They got a massive spike up out of nowhere overnight at the same exact time that Wisconsin did. These votes were literally just dumped in the laps of these cities that were the two swing states that they needed. And amazing, 100% of both of those votes and, and or both of those states all went to Biden. That is statistically impossible, mathematically not a possibility that you can have over 100 plus thousand votes go straight to one candidate in an election that has been pretty 50-50, I'm pretty sure we all could have seen, until we went to sleep. And then, you know what I mean? It's 100%, and in some cases, 101% all in favor of Biden. What the fuck? What the fuck is People this? People are pissed about this. That is not funny. That is not, there's nothing. <laughs> Bro, everybody's mad about this, and rightfully so. Look at this. All right, guys, like, share, comment, get this video out there because we can't let this go unseen. They're gonna. <laughs> Bro, it's everywhere. Like everyone's talking about the random spikes that happened out of nowhere, where it was a gradual crawl, and then magically it jumps up like a rocket ship into the sky. This is how they steal their power back. And I'm going to tell you right now, like I've been telling you, Biden-Harris is going to win 2020. They're going to shortly after have Biden fall ill with some bullshit sickness or whatever. He can't do the job, whatever, right? And then Harris steps in as the first black female president. And then she does all the liberal shit that she's been planning for the longest fucking time. And you know what? I blame the Republicans because they don't own big tech. They don't own most of the mainstream media and they don't own any of the Hollywood actors and actresses that are all put, putting all of their resources together. They are a well-oiled machine, and if you think you're beating it off of fairness alone, you're out of your mind. Dude, just look at the simple fact that you have conservatives being deplatformed off of Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook until after the election. Just look at the simple fact that you have Hollywood actors and actresses trying to tell black voters that they can't black or they, they can't vote for certain people and you have all of this this negative narrative and it, from day one it has always been we need to get Trump out of office we cannot have him back in office again it, it's always going to be like this and, and as long as Trump has it so a lot of shit going on it's going to be like this so this is what we're seeing with Wisconsin and Michigan that's a pretty big spike overnight look at that just slightly going over the Republicans and mind you look at these numbers before Biden had one 0.992 million and Trump had 2.200 million. After the night, Trump still had 2.200 million and Biden all of a sudden had 2.130 million. So how can Michigan find 140,000 random votes just for Biden? Out of 140,000 mail-in ballots, not a single one was for Trump. And with Arizona at the start, 
Biden was leading with more than 200,000 votes, with 73% reporting. With 84% reporting, Biden's lead has been cut to 93,500. That's voter fraud, by the way. It's disgusting, and we should... This is the kind of stuff that people are talking about on TikTok. So while on YouTube, it's all pro-Biden, pro-Harris, they're suppressing stuff like this. I love TikTok because organic stuff just pops up in the feed and you're seeing it in real time. You're seeing people show the news. You're seeing people show the spikes. You're seeing people's outrage. This is the real American populace that you are not seeing on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and all that other stuff. And I wanted to show you guys that because like, I know you all think it's a bunch of like 12 year olds dancing. That's not what TikTok is. There's a whole bunch of communities on TikTok and y'all gotta stop sleeping on it. There's even something for pro Biden people, okay? Like for people thinking it's just for kids, it's definitely not at this stage. And man, the, the proof that we've been seeing come out of this whole election process has been crazy. So many people exposing so many things. Now, granted, after Google bought ByteDance or whatever they ended up doing, there's been a lot more suppression happening. Uh, people being banned. I've seen a lot of TikToks about that deplatform till after the election. Like all kinds of crazy stuff that's just been going on. So I think, honestly, if you believe this election, you believe what's happening right now, I think, you know, you're kind of proud of the problem, man, because you don't get spikes out of nowhere like that, man. Like, come on, you mean, come on. At the same time, two, the two states that were in question that were trending red magically went blue all as we went asleep and woke up in the morning because they found a, over 100,000 votes all for Biden. Very convenient. Very convenient. I'm not even a Trump supporter. I mean, you guys, some of you guys saw the video I made about Trump. I mean, you, some of you guys saw the video and, and, and really hated what I had to say. But you, you got to admit that this is unfair. This is cheating, but this is something that happens when you don't fortify your 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 base. You don't, you don't build up something to prevent this from happening. So... I don't know what the hell is going to happen. I know we're in for probably a very long election process. They're probably going to fight it in the Supreme Court. We're probably not going to know till sometime even after 2021. I mean, like way into 2021, we'll be finding out. I don't know, man. This just seems like a recipe for disaster. But I want I want to hear your thoughts. I mean, do you think it's fair or do you think that this is credible that like that spike on a graph magically happens in a race that was literally just slow and steady crawling? I mean, just now, let me know. You mentioned that, of course, the FBI are saying they've got no evidence at the moment of massive voter fraud. There have been some claims about, I mentioned earlier, that batch of votes going into Pennsylvania that was 100% for Joe Biden. Project Veritas, which are an active uh, social media group who have got uh, some runs on the board for highlighting uh, some inconvenient facts in the past, have posted a story in the last couple of hours that alleges some cases, some allegations, some instances of a voter fraud in Michigan. Have a look and make up your own mind. We were issued a directive this morning to collect any ballots we find in mailboxes, collection boxes, just outgoing mail in general, separate them at the end of the day so that they could uh, hand stamp them with the previous day's date. Today is November 4th, for clarification. So 8 p.m. Election Day, November 3rd, uh, the Court of Appeals uh, ruled ballots have to be received by that time. And and what were you told? To separate them today so they could mark them with yesterday's date and send them through the express system to wherever they needed to go. This appears to be an attempt to circumvent Michigan law and allow late votes. And uh, you said there was a hamper where letter carriers were supposed to leave their ballots. Where are the ballots now? They were putting them into express bags to go to the distribution center. In regards to a uh, hamper, there was a standard hamper that all letter mail was supposed to go to, and they had a tub next to it that we were supposed to put any ballots collected today into. Now, we haven't been able to uh, independently verify that, but it gives you an idea of the sorts of allegations and the sorts of carry-on that could go on, and obviously those claims uh, will now be invested. Huge update. We just got, Project Veritas, we just got contacted by the Office of the Inspector General, who is aware of this video inside the post office in Michigan, and the whistleblower, who is discussing showing how the ballots were backdated to November 3rd, even though they were accepted November 4th. Huge update. Uh, the inspector general tells us they're aware of this. It falls under their jurisdiction. They're assessing whether to investigate. This whistleblower in Michigan is a patriot and a hero. He doesn't fear retaliation. He cares more about his country and what they're doing illegally there in Michigan, counting the votes illegally, than he cares about his own well-being and safety. And there's many more like him. And we want you guys to come forward, the honest post office workers, the honest poll workers, Whoever you are, wherever you are, 
You're the ones who can make the difference. You can't rely upon anyone else. Contact us, VeritasTips at ProtonMail.com. Be brave, do something. Explain one more time. So the people that were in front of me, there were two people in front of me that used a Sharpie. Yes. That was given to them by the poll workers. Yes. It did not read their ballot. Okay. And they pled it in there twice. I used a pen. Yep. Took their Sharpie and threw it away. And it read your and ballot. And it read my ballot. And it read your ballot. And it read my so ballot. So what they're doing is they're telling people to use the Sharpies. That way yes. those votes aren't counted. Yes. That's exactly what's happening. Yes. So there was other people that were in there voting with their, with their pens and... They literally went around and they were yanking pens out of their hands. Yes, they tried to do that to me, and I took their sharpie and I hid it because then they said, "Look for all the sharpies that are not being used and take the sharpies back." They had a bowl of pens behind them that they were not giving to people and only giving sharpies out. There we go. So the ones with the sharpies are not being read at all. <laughs> no. No. None of those none of those ballots are being read. So that's again, and so they're doing it because they're trying to skew all of the votes in yeah, there. And they that's exactly and they what's didn't going try on. They even slide it more than one time. They immediately took it and slid it in the front, like not even tried a second time. They just that's oh, correct. Yeah. Ran it through yeah, and slid it in the front, and I was like, Wait That's what they did with yours. Yep. And I just went with a sharpie, voted Trump, and uh, she just slid it in, and that was it. But I. I but they're not counting. They're not counting the ones with the sharpies, and no, so they're, they're forcing people to use the sharpies, and those votes aren't being counted. That's what's going on. Right. And then I posted it on my Facebook group chat in my neighborhood. They said they did it at the Queen Creek Library. They did it at ASU Polytech earlier. That like four different polling places were doing Sharpies all in, like between Queen Creek and like the edge of Gilbert. Yep. And and those ones are not being counted. Yeah. They're invalid. Yeah. I mean, yes. Like I have proof. <laughs> so they're invalidating votes is what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like I just, that's how what I it feels like. Picture, okay. Ballot, and then like, there was a guy that directly came out and yelled at me. Three times. He, they both came out. Oh, no, they, they called the sheriffs and said stop. that and, and told us to stop handing out the ballpoint pens, in which case those are the only ones that are actually being yeah, counted and validated. I, I used your pen and then I yeah. sent it back to you and I and said, this to somebody because it Yes, works. yes. And so we know that and we've been telling them you yeah. need to use a ballpoint pen, yeah. not the Sharpie, and now those are getting invalidated. Yeah. So people are coming here to vote for Donald Trump and those votes are all getting invalidated. That's what's going yeah. on. Yeah, where can I find a handful of them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Hey, uh, I'm almost finished with the, uh, with the boxes today. All right, brother. Hey, not a problem, man. I'm going to see if I can get you some, uh, like a little nice little handful. Oh, what's, what's your you unit get, number? You're going to get a handful? What's your unit number? Three, two, two. You're going to get a handful? <laughs> I'll probably put a, I don't know, maybe. If, 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 it, if it's in there, I ain't do it. And you'll put some in there for me? I might, man. All right, Let's brother. see what I can do. A postal worker in Nevada offered our undercover journalist a handful of ballots that was sent to the wrong address. This is another example of USPS voter fraud. Project Veritas have posted a story in the last couple of hours that alleges some cases of a voter fraud in Michigan. Have a look and make up your own mind. So 8 p.m. election day, November 3rd, uh, the Court of Appeals uh, ruled ballots have to be received by that time. And, and what were you told? I'm suffering today so they can mark them on yesterday's day. Some of us got some extra ballots and stuff. How many of those you getting lately? People with extra ballots are undeliverable or whatever. It's been quite a few. Quite because, a few. You know, people are sitting based off their last old address. So, yeah, it's been quite a few. Well, if it wasn't me, though, hypothetically, though, <laughs> hey, it I, could be done. I can't say nothing because I don't know. I'm just a delivery. All right, <laughs> but there's a lot of them out there like that, though, yeah, right? Yeah, there are. Where, where, where's the most of them at then? <laughs> if we were hypothetically, you a handful. yeah, where can I find a handful of them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Man. <laughs> Hey, uh, I'm almost finished with the, uh, with the boxes today. All right, brother. Hey, not a problem, man. I'm going to see if I can get you some, uh, like, a little nice little handful. Oh, what's, what's your you're unit gonna, number? You're going to get a handful? What's your unit number? Three, two, two. You're going to get a handful? <laughs> I'll probably put a, I don't know, maybe. If, 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 it, if it's in there, I ain't do it. And you'll put some in there for me? I might, man. All right, I'll brother. see what I can do.
I don't think I, I wasn't supposed to hear that. I was one of the last carriers in the building. I don't even think he realized I was still there. Okay, tell me where you work. I work at the post office in Erie, PA. Tell us what happened this morning, November the 5th. This morning I was casing my route and I saw the postmaster pull one of our supervisors to the side. And uh, as he was pulling the supervisor, it was, and it was really close to where my uh, minor case was, so I was able to hear him listen in. And I heard him say, to the supervisor that they messed up yesterday. That they, and I was, so I was like, oh, what did they mess up on? And uh, he told the, the supervisor that um, they had uh, postmarked one of the ballots to the fourth, to put in the third, because they were supposed to hit, uh, put them for the third. Why was he upset? Uh, because, well, uh, he's not honest to God, he's actually a Trump hater. But uh, he, because they were one of because uh, it may have came from Pittsburgh. I don't know the whole details because I'm not a supervisor. All these ballots that are coming in today, tomorrow, yesterday, are all supposed to be postmarked with her. Do you believe that order still stands? Yes, I no doubt. Considering that they still want us to pick up uh, ballots tomorrow, they had a specific meeting, a uh, safety meeting. Well, one of the uh, well, one of the, the higher ups, Rob and Stephanie, basically told us to make sure we pick up the ballots and give them directly to the supervisor. Rob, the postmaster. Yes. And and uh, and you're telling me that they're still asking people to pick up ballots tomorrow, November sixth. Yes. There's a whistleblower inside your office that says that you uh, have been ordering employees to backdate ballots to November third from November fourth and fifth. That's untrue, and I don't talk to reporters. Thank you. Okay, but um, he's. We've had multiple sources say that this is happening. He hung up the phone inside the Broward County facility in Florida. I'm not here to vote, but I uh, just wanted to know if uh, how it's going with the fraud, the ballots. Oh, I have no answers yet, so let me get somebody who can answer that. Thank question. you. Who are you? I'm James O'Keefe with Project Veritas. Oh, how are you? Nice to see you. Yeah. How are you? May I come in? Yeah. Thank you. Great. Have you heard of us? Yes, I was here. Oh. Are you a fan? I'm a supervisor of elections. I can't say so. I'm completely neutral. We're just checking out to see if there's any fraud in the elections. We've detected a bunch of voter registration fraud. We turned it into the authorities and they haven't done squandola. The Florida authorities or the feds? Both. Any mail-in fraud or voter mail-in fraud? Yeah. It's very difficult to scam these systems on the voting side. On the voter registration side, the system is very vulnerable because the nitwit legislature has a system where everybody operates on the honor system. And so you could say that you're a citizen of the United States when you're a citizen of China and nobody would challenge it. We found a ballot yesterday at the canvassing board. Some clown in New Jersey, mm -hmm. who is a registered voter both in New Jersey and mm -hmm. in Florida, which is very common, mm -hmm. shouldn't be, but it is, asked for a vote by mail ballot. And we sent, we sent him a vote-by-mail ballot. Apparently, he also asked for a vote-by-mail ballot from his county in New Jersey. And when he sent his vote-by-mail envelope to Florida, he put his New Jersey ballot in it. Is that a DA or, or a uh, attorney general of the state? Local prosecutor. Local, and do you find that they actually do anything? No. It's, you know, local prosecutors tend to be most animated by homicide, crime against the person. If everything operates by the law, it should be good for conservatives. Except 475,000 votes. Here. What's important for the president here is that's 207,000 Republican votes. We should be five points ahead. Tell us where you work. I work in the Traverse City Post Office, more specifically the Barlow Branch. Your boss told you and your colleagues something that shocked you this morning. What was it? We were issued a directive this morning to collect any ballots we find in mailboxes, collection boxes, just outgoing mail in general, separate them at the end of the day so that they could uh, hand stamp them with the previous day's date. Today is November 4th, for clarification. Who is your boss and what is his title? 
Jonathan would be a direct supervisor, yes. Uh, as of right now, he is the opening supervisor for the Barlow Branch Post Office. So I, and this is anecdotal, uh, carrier down in another office said they watched the postmaster doing it. Um, if it were just a typical day, it would be clerks doing it up at the distribution center. So 8 p.m. election day, November 3rd, uh, the Court of Appeals uh, ruled ballots have to be received by that time. And and what were you told? To separate them today so they could mark them with yesterday's date and send them through the express system to wherever they needed to go. This appears to be an attempt to circumvent Michigan law and allow late votes. And uh, you said there was a hamper where letter carriers were supposed to leave their ballots. Where are the ballots now? They were putting them into express bags to go to the distribution center. In regards to a uh, hamper, there was a standard hamper that all letter mail was supposed to go to, and they had a tub next to it that we were supposed to put any ballots collected today into. Yes. What made you come forward? Uh, that's sketchy. <laughs> I don't like sketchy. It screams corruption. Uh, also, knowing the post office's leanings politically, it, it didn't seem quite right. What is your message to other postal workers who see things like this? Report it. Report it. How are we supposed to have any integrity in this country if we? We're just going to let things slide based on a scaling issue. Are you afraid of retaliation against you? Uh, I've had whistleblower policies backfire on me in the past, so yes. We'll have to reach out to Jonathan Clark for comment. Uh, hey, is this Jonathan? Yes. Hey, hey, I'm a reporter with Project Veritas, James O'Keefe here, and I have, a, I have information that you guys have been stamping ballots with the previous date, November 3rd. You just have he just hung up. He just hung up the phone on me. Tell us where you work. I work in the Traverse City Post Office, more specifically the Barlow Branch. Your boss told you and your colleagues something that shocked you this morning. What was it? We were issued a directive this morning to collect any ballots we find in mailboxes, collection boxes, just outgoing mail in general. Separate them at the end of the day so that they could uh, hand stamp them with the previous day's date. Today is November 4th, for clarification. Who is your boss, and what is his title? Jonathan would be a direct supervisor, yes. Uh, as of right now, he is the opening supervisor for the Barlow Branch Post Office. So I, and this is anecdotal, uh, carrier down in another office said they watched the postmaster doing it. Um, if it were just a typical day, it would be clerks doing it up at the distribution center. So 8 p.m. election day, November 3rd, uh, the Court of Appeals uh, ruled ballots have to be received by that time. And and what were you told? To separate them today so they could mark them with yesterday's date and send them through the express system to wherever they needed to go. This appears to be an attempt to circumvent Michigan law and allow late votes. And uh, you said there was a hamper where letter carriers were supposed to leave their ballots. Where are the ballots now? They were putting them into express bags to go to the distribution center. In regards to a uh, hamper, there was a standard hamper that all letter mail was supposed to go to, and they had a tub next to it that we were supposed to put any ballots collected today into. Yes. What made you come forward? Uh, that's sketchy. <laughs> I don't like sketchy. It screams corruption. Uh, also, knowing the post office's leanings politically, it, it didn't seem quite right. What is your message to other postal workers who see things like this? Report it. How are we supposed to have any integrity in this country if we are just going to let things slide based on a scaling issue? Are you afraid of retaliation against you? Uh, I've had whistleblower policies backfire on me in the past, so yes. We'll have to reach out to Jonathan Clark for comment. Uh, hey, is this Jonathan? Yes. Hey, hey, I'm a reporter with Project Veritas, James O'Keefe here, and I have, a, I have information that you guys have been stamping ballots with the previous date, November 3rd. He just hung up he the phone on me. He just hung up the phone on me.